one hey all welcome back to the channel and today we're going to conclude our look at the individual bots that make up the fans project Saurus Ryu combiner their take on Dino King or Monstructor if you prefer this is the leader of the group this is Dino Roku along with the uh, Tyrannobot both of these guys are going to be our focus this time around in the latest got by true review One hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, light up my baby. Hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all my social media links, all of that in the description down below. If you are in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, you can hit the join button right here on YouTube. Become a channel member. And this is Dino Roku. This is the Tyrannobot. Honestly... This is the leader of the Dino Force. This is Goryu, again, or Goryo, or Goryu. I don't know how to say the Japanese name. I wish I did. In North America, as part of Monstructor, this lad is better known as Ice Pick. Uh, again, super cool name. Probably second only to Scowl. I would say that this is a cool pretender shell. It's not my favorite pretender shell. It's all right, but... This might be my favorite bot. Without any further ado, let's head over to the table and take a closer look at these lads. And so here in our ongoing series, looking at the Fans Project Saurus Ryu, we have the leader of the pack, the leader of the team, Dino Roku and the Tyrannobot. I know it's a mouthful. For anybody joining us late, let me just clarify it real quick for you. Saurus Ryu is Fans Project's take on a third-party representation of the Transformers Victory character, combiner of Dino King and the Dino Force. A lot of people that aren't familiar with that will better know this combiner as Monstructor. In North America, of course, very different uh, colorations for a lot of these characters. This character, Dino Roku, who is Dino Six, um, if you know the Fans Project's naming, it was like, Dino Ichi, which is one, Ni, two, uh, I think San is three, I think She is four, I think Go is five, and Roku is six, if I'm not mistaken. Who is this then? This is the character of Go Ryu, who was the leader of the Dino Force. Some people will better know him as Ice Pick. I thought that Ice Pick always had one of the coolest names. Actually, I thought Ice Pick and Scowl had the two coolest names. Now, to be fair, Ice Pick is actually made up of like a red and teal color. Obviously, this guy won't be that. It is more of an homage to uh, his coloration as part of Dino King, which is the coloration I prefer. But I do like the name Ice Pick. In terms of the Tyrannobot, the Tyrannosaurus Pretender Shell, it's all right. This one was, when this one arrived to me, it was a little malformed. Like the, this top section did not want to fit in and lock in as it's supposed to. It's better now than it was. It's not perfect, but it's a million times better than what it was. Uh, this is a like a, a vinyl, I guess, a, a rubbery plastic, but somebody, I think it might have been Cardboard Bots, asked, asked me if it was vinyl, and I, I think that's what it is. We really don't have any articulation here, though I do think the tail can move. Yeah, the tail moves, and the head, and the head on this one moves. The little arms don't, these legs don't, it is what it is. It's solid, it's hefty. The blaster up here can go up and down a little bit and left and right. And of course, inside this lad, because he's a pretender shell, we have the inner bot. Our little blaster looks pretty good. A toy hacks label in right there to give some added detail. It's the same on the other side. That's all that's on the blaster. Now, if you were here last time when we looked at Dino Go, or scowl, if you will. This is gonna be very, very familiar, very, very similar to that. The easiest way for us to begin is with leg mode first. We compact him to put him in the pretender shell. For leg mode, we stand the guy up. There you go, that's really it. You can, by rights, bring that up as the knee. And this is really it for leg mode. We would put a foot in between here. There's a couple of little tabs and pegs. And 
like we'd have forward and back and to the side movement. You can see that we have toy hacks here on the side that gives like a silver to green fading on the clouds. I think it's beautiful. We have more of that red texture detail there and down here on these parts. This is all toy hacks on the side. These on the side. I love these ones in the front. I think they add so much character. Uh, and here on the knees. Note that when you go to leg mode, I don't think I said it with Dino Go, but I'll say it here. It's true for both of them. These kneecaps actually lock into little uh, tab holes on the uh, waist, basically. And that's what kind of holds the lower part and the top part together extra solid. And it does a good job of it, to be honest with you. So yeah, this is, I mean, it's a chunky leg, but it is a very functional leg. What about going to the kind of beast mode? Pretty easy from here. We pick off that, we pick off that, and then we turn these out and we slide an arm down and bring this forward. Turn this out. Slide an arm down and bring it forward. These claws come up over the hands, come out and up over the hands. We don't have to kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? We don't have to like turn it to wrist or anything this time like we did with Dino Go. They just come out and come up over the hands. I don't know if I like that better or not, but it's the way it's designed and I guess it's unique. And then we come to the back here and we split these feet and bring them out to the side. Then uh, we should be able to flip down, take those knees off and then flip down these legs. Turn at the waist. This should be really familiar if you saw Dino Go. We combine our wars the leg basically and collapse it in. Combine our wars the leg and collapse it in. Then we close this back around and we bring the foot, mm, did I do this right? Ah, we bring that down. Then we close it back around and bring the foot forward this way. And we bring out a, a toe and we bring out a toe. So now he has the triple claw down front. Again, I'll try to show it here. There's a little tab that goes locked in right here and it's Hard to get it locked in, to be honest with you. We bring this down and we turn it around. We bring that in and it should lock in. They don't like to do it the best on this guy, but that's the idea behind it. And then, boom, in the end, here we have him in his little monster beast mode. Oh, and I guess if you want, you can pick that up and bring it down on the back if you're so inclined and don't want that left up there. But yeah, there's his little monster beast mode. I just cleaned up a little tab here and there. In terms of articulation for this guy, the arms are the arms for the robot, so we have all of the same articulation that you would have for robot arms. The claws can slash and all that stuff. The mouth here, pretty sure it opens. Yeah, the mouth opens. The legs can go out to the side. They can go back, they can go forward. Again, we do have a knee because of the way it's collapsed. We have ankle tilt left and right and forward and back. I think the feet here are a little bit better. Honestly, I think I really like the way the feet work here a little bit better. It's just not as much flipping around as you need to do with Dino Go. In terms of the, angle that up like that. In terms of the robot mode, we'll do that next. We extend and we should be able to extend, except this don't want to do it for me now, for whatever weird reason. Bring that one up, get that out of the way, and then what is keeping me over here from getting it out? Is it that? There we go. And put that foot back in. So we extend the two legs up. We bring the claw up on the back of the arm, turn the wrist, claw up on the back of the arm, turn the wrist and then we bring this down on the chest and then back here you bring this down so you can push up the head and bring that back into the body turn the head around baby and boom in the end here you have dino roku or goriu 
or ice pick in his robot mode, baby. And I love this guy. Let's get into some scores for him. Okay, so first things first. And let's get into some scores for this guy. Okay, first things first. This is a, an homage again to the G1 toy rather than the G1 animation. And in that respect, this is really true to that original kind of like G1 toy. Really the only thing different is that the white uh, beast head that's on his chest, that should still be green. Other than that, pretty much everything here is correct. These green pieces aren't there, but like, yeah, the layout is pretty much correct. In terms of the animation, the lower legs are supposed to be white, they're white here. Oh, there's one thing I didn't do though. By rights for robot mode, these toe pieces should go flipped back. My mistake. Uh, yeah, so as I was saying, the feet and legs should be white. The silver's cool. We do have red toy hex detailing here and down on the toes uh, and on the side of the legs over here, which we've already seen. Then the thighs, they should be green. We have red detailing here. This is toy hex. Up on these little sections is not, but in the line there, that is also a toy hex label. He does have Kind of like, uh, I'll say a white on his chest with a Decepticon logo. It's not the head, but it is a section on the chest. So this is actually kind of accurate to the animation with the rest of it being green. I love the red detailing in here. That is also a Toy Hacks label. There was red paint there. The head should be white with red eyes. Of course, it's a Decepticon. This one is a white head, but it has a yellow face and blue eyes. So that's not... That's not exactly right, but again, it would be if we were looking at the toy. The arms, the upper arms should be white. They are here, except for this green piece. That's an extra piece that I guess could also be white. They don't green, whatever. The hands and the kind of claws around the hands, that should all be black. The green here is correct, honestly. In terms of the homage to a G1 toy, this is very good. In terms of an homage to, a, to the G1 cartoon, to victory, also very good. I'm gonna say solid 9.5. Now remember, he is not ice pick in terms of coloration because most of his body would have to, instead, instead of being green, be like a teal. And where you see the white on this guy, that would really pretty much have to be uh, like red colors for the most part anyway. Uh, so the coloration, yeah, 9.5. The transformation, 10. I think it's the best of the entire set. It is easy, it is functional, everything feels good. The articulation, the head goes left, right, up, down. We have ratchets here, out to the side. Yes, it kind of hits the head, but you can do this. There you go, all the way out to the side. We have bicep swivel, we have super deep elbow, we have wrist rotation, we have a waist rotation. I feel like we are supposed to have a, um, Ab crunch here, but I don't have it extended right now, and I don't want to really push it, but I feel like there's supposed to be one there. Uh, out to the side with a ratchet on the leg, backward ratchet, forward ratchet, thigh swivel, super duper deep knee, uh, the knee pad moves, the lower ankle pad moves, I guess we'll say. The feet go left, right, forward, and back. This guy literally has Everything that I could want for his class, also a 10, a 9.5, a 10, and a 10. This guy is easily like a 9.8. He is fantastic. In terms of his size, he's basically a deluxe right here. We have Shattered Glass Ratchet and Kingdom Huffer, but you get the idea. Here he is with his entire team. And boy, do I love this set. I am not even gonna pretend that I'm not absolutely blown away. Couple of minor gripes here and there. If you've watched the series, you'll see that there are a couple things that are not perfect, but the minor gripes are really minor. I cannot thank Razor Bear enough. I only have this combiner, and I do love Dino King. I, I really enjoy Dino Force. I thought they were hilarious. I, 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 I I am humbled, I am thankful to have this. I am just very glad that, for the most part, it really lives up to being an awesome, awesome set. 
Like I said, a couple of minor imperfections, but overall, I would say a very strong set. In terms of the leader of the pack here, along with his dino partner, I really, really dig it. Obviously, I think it looks tremendous. The Toy Hacks labels across the entire set really do add a little bit. Here's the thing. This was going for a toy homage over a uh, animation homage, and the Toy Hacks labels just give that added sticker detail that these guys were missing. It took them from just a little bit too bland to really about as ideal as you could possibly hope for. I love this set. Now, next time we're going to have our finale for this, we're going to take a look at the combined mode, the big boy himself, along with all of my other Decepticon combiners, we're going to have a look at Dino King, or if you will, Monstructor in all of his glory. And here we are once again, and here they are. Uh, the Pretender Shell was a bit rough when it came to me. It did not want to fit in. Luckily, I've been able to kind of force it into place. I think I've helped the tolerance of it a lot. It fits much better now. Not perfect, but much better than it did when I first got it. I don't know, heat, humidity, something probably got to it. This is definitely rubber or vinyl or something. I mean, it is what it is. But I'm very, very, very happy to have it. Uh, this is probably my favorite bot. I think the transformation is... Very intuitive, it's easy, but I mean, it, it, it makes the monster mode that he's supposed to have. Great looking robot. This is a case where it's a great homage to the plastic, it's a great homage to the animation. So it's a great homage all the way around. And the Toy Hacks labels really just serve to kind of amp it up just a little bit. I like the feet here better than on kind of his mold partner, mold mate, that being Scowl, where you have to do a lot more flipping. This time, it's pretty straightforward for the most part. Functional robot, great leader for the group, solid leg, a great beast, easy transformation. What's not to love? Let me know what you think about Dino Roku and his pretender shell or Gorayu. Again, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I hope I am. Uh, uh, uh. Um, or Ice Pick. Let me know what you think about this guy and his pretender shell. I appreciate you guys coming by. Give me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. Don't forget that the next time we get together is going to be combined day, baby. And we're going to see just how Dino King or Monstructor comes together. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Stick around. Have some fun with us. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, hit that join button. Especially don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single solitary day, baby, you right there, you do make a difference. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, baby, right here inside the videos.